I had to put the phone out here to charge up anyway, so I thought I, I would do a video about the pipeline. This has been a kind of a developing story about that Nord Stream. But there's some other stuff that came out about it today that I thought was really interesting. Um, you know, it turns out when they, okay, like, <laughs> the Swedes went to investigate it. You know, when this first happened, oh, the UN was upset. Can't have this happen. Can't have people going around blowing up undersea pipelines and cables and this sort of thing. Can't have that happen. So they were going to get to the bottom of that. And there was going to be hell to pay. Well, the Swedes went to investigate it. And after they finished their investigation, they said, well, uh, we know, but we can't tell you. Well, that tells us a lot right there. Then it comes out that this isn't the first time this sort of thing has happened. I think it was 2019 in a routine inspection of the pipeline they ran across this underwater drone packed with explosive parked under one of the pipelines. Well, then the Swedes drug it out of there. And NATO said, oh, yeah, that's ours. We, uh, we misplaced it. How do you, you know, that thing had to be a huge amount of money for this drone and they lost it under a pipeline. So evidently they've had intentions of this sort of nonsense for a while. But evidently when they blew this uh, Nord Stream 2, they only got, you know, they run the, the lines in, in parallel pairs. And they only got one of them of Nord Stream 2. So that is ready to go. I mean, they, they said they can fire that up at any time, which is probably a really good thing, unless we decide to take that one out too to finish the job. But we really got caught on that. You know, I mean, there's no denying that we were involved in that, but we do deny. Big mystery, you know. But they are now, you know, the whole idea is now we're, we're shipping the liquefied natural gas over there at 10 times the cost of what the Russian gas was. So this has just killed industry uh, in Germany. And evidently that was the idea. For some reason, we want to take Germany down, though in one theory they're an ally and all this. I don't understand it, but we want to ruin their industry and freeze them. But there are uh, big protests in both Germany and France demanding that they get out of NATO and they get out of the EU. Because this is a no good for either one of them, you know, and they were hesitant, you know, like both Germany and France. Germany, at first, they were only given humanitarian aid, but a lot of pressure put on them, a hell of a lot of pressure to kick in weapons. So they have been. And they have drug it down where they got very little. I think they said they had enough artillery shells for like two days, you know. And in fact, this last missile system that they were sending over, they don't even have them in their army, but they donated them to Ukraine. But there's a tremendous amount of pressure. And I thought it was funny too, you know, like they keep pressuring uh, Hungary and Serbia to get on board with these sanctions. 
and of course it's not good for them i mean they they need that that oil and that gas i mean it's a matter of survival for their country but they've been getting gas from that turk stream pipeline that runs from russia into turkey and then across the black sea and they were told uh, that's a nice little pipeline you got there too bad if something should happen to that you know, wink, wink. It's like we're gangsters or something. But that's a hell of a way to treat, you know, people who are in theory your allies. But trying to keep them in line. But I think there was just now another uh, leak in an oil line that goes into Germany. But they claim that was an accident, but I don't know. You know, you gotta you gotta wonder on these accidents. But like that whole misplace in that drone, and the whole big Baltic Sea, it happens to end up underneath a an oil line, and they just misplaced it. So that's been in the works for a while. But it's interesting too, you know, like we're still buying oil from Russia, though we, you know, forbid these other places to buy it. And we're pissed at Saudi Arabia because they won't sell us, you know, they want to, they're supposed to increase production to tide us over this, you know. And they say, yeah, screw you. So then we go to Venezuela. You know, like, now we've had all these people from Venezuela coming across the border. The reason that the people are leaving Venezuela is because there's no jobs there. there there's, there's nothing there because we tried to overthrow their government, failed, so we put these hellacious sanctions on them. We were actually pirating oil ships that were coming out of Venezuela. We would just steal them. So these people in Venezuela are suffering. So they get into our country. Well, I don't think they think too highly of us. You know, after we ruined their country. So God only knows what will come of that in the long run. But we got to try to do that always. Got to try to overthrow countries. And if we fail... Well, even if it's never worked out, there, there's never been a case where we have done regime change in another country that has worked out well. We always claim, ah, we're bringing them democracy. We we just kill their country, rape it for every bit of oil or any minerals we can, and then just leave it a wreckage and pat ourselves on the back for bringing them democracy. So anyway, now we're, we're trying to get oil out of Venezuela again. They turned us down once, we're trying again. We are even promised them that we would uh, give them back some of the money that we stole from them because when we were trying to overthrow and put in that puppet, we stole all their money that was in various accounts that was supposed to go then to this, this new president that we were going to install. So now we're saying, well, if you give us some oil, we'll maybe give you your money back. Yeah, nice crooks to deal with. But that whole thing of, of sanctioning this and sanctioning that, you know, I mean, we've done that like we're still doing that with Cuba. That isn't what the State Department is for. You're supposed to be encouraging trade, not using trade as a lever to overthrow some government so you can put some puppet in. 
But they're going to try it in Venezuela again, see if they can't get them, give them some oil. Which, you know, and it's funny too, you know, like now this liquefied natural gas that we're hauling over to Europe, like a short time before they blew this pipeline and, and thought this is a great thing that we can now sell that gas over there, I had heard that they fully expect that there will be shortages in the northeast of this country. They were talking blackouts. But yet we're shipping all this gas over there? Well, it's because when we sell, the gas that we sell here, we jack the price up four times to sell it to Europe. But if you're going around blowing up pipelines and stuff, my God, them liquefied natural gas tankers are one easy target. Big, fat, slow-moving target. So if you're going to play that game, they could start disappearing. And even now, you know, we've got... A pile of B-52s over there. Been flying back and forth all the time. Um, just hanging around, you know. And so now we decide it's time to run some nuke drills. You know, when, when tensions are this high and you're going to fart around there and, and start running, you know, fake little passes like you're going to make a, a run at, you know. Boy, you're playing a chancy game there. And it's so funny, you know, because they keep saying, oh, Putin has threatened to use nukes. Well, that isn't the case, and they know damn well it isn't, but they reinterpreted things that he said. You know, they said exactly what They've always said, and it was not a threat, it was just a reminder. But we choose to interpret that as a threat. So we started, we were threatening long before. I mean, that's why they reminded us of their nuclear policy, because we had been talking about using nukes. Well, especially Zelensky, that nut is really all for it. Crazy world we're living in. But the propaganda is just absolutely astounding, the amount that comes out from us. You know, it's just relentless, and it's just way over the top all the time. You know, like even the other day, you know, I had heard like, it was like two or three weeks ago, I had uh, got a warning, oh, you got to make sure all your, your like your passwords and stuff are secure on your electronics because the Russians are trying to hack everybody. I'm not afraid of the Russians. I'm not worried about the Russians getting my information. I'm more concerned about our government trying to get into every goddamn thing. But anyway, they had that warning out, which I just plain ignored. Because if you ever watch, there is um, a program called Bit Defender that shows real-time hacking traffic that goes on. You look at that and you will see there isn't any coming from Russia. It's all coming out of Europe. The majority is out of Europe and then out of China. But there's never anything out of Russia. They aren't trying to hack us. So like there was that, uh, some airline reservation snafu the other day. And of course, then they, they mentioned, you know, all it was was a denial of service where, you know, you just pawn some website 
with so many requests to the point where it doesn't function anymore. And that, this is something that teenage kids do. But they claim that someplace in this there was uh, words in Russian. So, oh boy, it was uh, the Russians were hacking our air system, you know. And, and we have always said that, oh, you know, if there's some kind of cyber attack, that we will take that as seriously as an actual attack, you know, a, a physical military attack. That has been our policy. So they're trying to blame this on the Russians. Russians had nothing to do with it. Some kid someplace screwing around. I mean, that, that's all it was. But we like to say huh, it was the Russians because there might have been a word or two of Russian in there. This happens pretty frequently. And the funny part is always when somebody seriously looks at the wording, they find that the, the syntax is all wrong for somebody who is like a native Russian speaker. This is always somebody pretending to be Russian. And they just worded a little wrong, you know, that, that it wouldn't make sense to a native speaker. But they always, they're constantly uh, advertising, uh, I see this all the time, for people who can speak Russian to work with the NSA and the CIA. And that's what they're doing, you know, making these fake attacks so they can blame it on the Russians. I'm not worried about Russia. Russia will do what Russia has to do, what we provoke them to do. And they're just responding. That's what they're doing. I can't blame them. They will do what they have to do. But the provoking that we do is completely unnecessary and it's, it's just asking for trouble. Yeah, we're supposed to be the good guys. We aren't. We are not the good guys. Haven't been for a long time.